Hey folks, Crimson Blaze here. Welcome to the channel. This is another video in my series of hammock tips from the trail. And this week, or a couple weeks, I will be through hiking the John Muir Trail. And I'm gonna do something a little different, and let me tell you why. In all of my research of the John Muir Trail, looking up YouTube videos of hikers, I didn't find a single YouTube video of a person hammock camping the John Muir Trail. There was one video of a guy who was being interviewed and talked about how it was possible to hammock camp the trail because he had done it, but he didn't give a lot of you know details around that. So my hope is for this video to create a guide on how to hammock camp the John Muir Trail. Now this will involve me just talking about each campsite that I'm at while I'm on the John Muir Trail. I'll talk about how favorable the conditions are, you know, with the trees, how, how's the dirt, is it rocky, is it sandy? Um, are there other amenities that are around, like the water, are there bear boxes, you know, things that you'll need to consider when you're doing, uh, when you're planning for your trip. So that's my hope, that's my hope for this video. All right, folks, I'm excited to do this. Um, let's get going. Campsite number one on the John Muir Trail, I find myself at Crabtree Meadows. And I am starting from the southern terminus. Now I had to come over Cottonwood Lakes, uh, New Army Pass in order to get here. And very first night I camped at Rock Creek and plenty of hammock options there. So no need to worry if you're coming in, but you could be coming in from a bunch of different uh, entry points. So I'm starting with the, the first night where I'm actually on the JMT. And like I said, that is at Crabtree Meadows. And a lot of people use this as a base camp for um, summiting Mount Whitney, which is what I will be doing tomorrow morning. Let me tell you about some of the amenities that are here at Crabtree Meadows. Uh, first, there is a bear box which is critical for me because part of my, my food strategy is I have a food bag. My, my hard-sided uh, bear container isn't big enough to hold the eight to nine days of food that I need to have for my trip. But it has uh, a bear box, so, which is convenient for me because I can put my food bag in there and have no worries at all. So there's a food box. Uh, two, it has a good source of water. Um, there's a nice stream, creek that's flowing through uh, the Crabtree Meadows and pretty easy to get water. So that's always a plus. And third, which this is a, a bonus, <laughs> there's a privy. There's a privy here. Um, it's not much to it, but you know, it's better than finding a tree and digging six inches and <laughs> having to deal with all that. Um, and so those are some great amenities that are here. Uh, plenty of trees. That's the one thing that obviously as a hammock camper you're looking for. There are tons of trees here in the Crabtree, um, the Crabtree Meadows area and plenty of space. Even though a lot of people camp here as base camp for Mount Whitney, uh, I, I have found that there is plenty of space for everybody and you should easily be able to find a hammock here, a hammock spot in Crabtree Meadows. Well, that's gonna do it for campsite one on the John Muir Trail. I'm not gonna go into uh, a lot of details cause I've got 16 of them to do. So I'm gonna try to keep these brief and short. Um, but those are some of the highlights of the Crabtree Meadows camping area. So here's my setup for campsite night number two on the John Muir Trail. I am at the Wallace Creek um, area, which sets me up good for tackling Forester Pass tomorrow. But this is a looks to be a good place for hammock camping, especially because there are a lot of tents here. And because this is a popular site, um, there aren't many tent pads available, but having a hammock, you know, I was able to just jump on two trees and it was great. 
but there's a bear box here there's a good water source at wallace creek and so it has everything that you need so this is wallace creek as you can see plenty plenty of trees here also plenty of hikers so the bear box is right down there and so is the water source one tip that i will give about hammock camping uh, specifically on the john muir trail some of these trees are big you know i'm glad that i brought my 12 foot long daisy chains because so far the couple nights that i've been here these trees are big so if you're going to hammock camp the john muir trail be sure to bring something long enough that's going to wrap around some of these trees that's going to do it for campsite number two on the John Muir Trail. We'll see you at the next campsite. Campsite night three on the JMT is at Vedette Meadow. And this place is awesome. Um, plenty of space to hang hammocks. Great access to the water. Uh, again, they have a bear box if you need it, but this is fabulous place. So let's come in and look at my campsite. Have my hammock hung so far. I'm just relaxing. Nothing fully set up yet. But yeah, even in this little spot right here, there's a lot of great uh, trees here for hammock camping. I think the thing I like the most is logs for sitting when you're having dinner and the best is the creek great access to the creek fairly private site look at this beautiful creek by my campsite at the Denton Meadow man it is awesome Great place to relax and lounge. Just sitting here minding my business. Eating my dinner. This guy comes walking right on over. So here's the trail coming in to Vedette Meadow. And as you can see, that's where I'm back out there. Plenty of trees for hammock camping and nice fairly flat area that goes even on further down uh, the creek and just a i don't know a tenth of a mile two tenths of a mile there's even more if you're headed towards forester pass there's even more hammock spots that are right next to the creek but there's no bear box and you know so highly recommend uh vedette meadow and look at this <laughs> that's my view for the night so yeah campsite night three vedette meadow best one so far all right we'll see you at the next campsite she's gonna do campsite night four on the jmt I was a little nervous at first because I hadn't planned this and I'm a big planner, but I am not at a named place. I am at mile marker 162.5 and I'm probably a third of the way up Pincho Pass. So I started headed up uh, looking for groves of trees and this was the last set. Um, I, I went uh, two tenths of a mile a little further and I didn't see anything. So this uh, mile marker 162.5 is um, does have trees and it's actually pretty nice. So let me show you my water source and my view. So this is my view. Pretty sweet. And there's a little trail that goes down there where I'm going to get some water and just freshen up a little bit. Um, beautiful I'm in the shade already it's about five o'clock it's a nice area here for you know eating dinner tonight and I am tucked back in there to help you know in case there's any bad wind or tonight 
Uh, it'll protect me from that. So there are no bear boxes at this site. I think I have passed the point of the last bear boxes at the campsites. I think so. Um, I think there was one down there at Tyndall Creek with the bridge. I'll have to check that. Um, but there was a bear box uh, down there. And that was a great spot. That bridge, super cool. Um, but nothing up here. So uh, plan to have your bear canister. But let, me, uh, let me show you the hammock. Not much to it. Well, that's going to do it for campsite night four on the JMT. And hopefully we'll have the same luck tomorrow. See you at the next campsite. So here is camp for night five on the John Muir Trail. And as you can see, there are just, there's trees all over the place. Great places for hanging a hammock here. show you my access to water A great access to water great mountain view you can see there's just trees it's a forest down here which is not normal <laughs> that I've seen so far I am at uh, mile marker 141.5 uh, near the Palisade Creek area. So I don't know if it has an exact uh, name, but it's going to work. It's going to work really well. But all right, folks, we will see you at the next campsite. Campsite night six. I am at mile marker 119.8 and I am just north of Evolution Valley and there was some other lake below that. I, I don't remember that. Um, not much to talk about <laughs> with this campsite, but it's uh, blocking the wind and it's right next to a stream and it actually has a pretty good view. So let me show you it. Like I said, it's not much, but I have two good trees, you know, for hanging my hammock. And actually over here, where I'll probably have dinner, so good sitting rock. I always like to have a good sitting rock for dinner and a view. So that's pretty good. There's a nice little uh, water source that I have. And my own little waterfall and I'm just tucked back right in there you can see my hammock so I am at mile marker 119.8 I went a little further than I was expecting there is no hammock camping in Evolution Valley and there were trees high up on the rock but no access down to the water so that wasn't gonna work. You could cowboy camp there, but, um, and I was thinking about it, but there's just too much wind. And then there's another beautiful lake, uh, the Lake Inlet, I believe, down below. Again, you could hammock camp there, but it was too windy for me. Uh, so I decided to push on below that Lake Inlet. And then there was another beautiful lake below that. And again, you could hammock camp there as well. Um, and I'll put the names of these when I get back home and, you know, do some research. But um, the wind was just, I mean, 30, 40 mile an hour, just gust. And it just wasn't going to be a comfortable campsite. So camp where I'm at now is great, again, because I'm tucked in from the wind. I'm close to the water. And, you know, I got two trees. I got some protection from, um, you know, from the elements and... It's great. So that's going to do it for campsite night six. And we will see you at the next campsite. And look at the view of the lake. This is campsite night seven. 
I am here at Sally Keys Lakes and it is beautiful. Um, I'm located at mile marker 101. So let me show you around. So I've got a beautiful little campsite here um, at Sally Key Lakes. I'm just on the southbound of Selden Pass. But look at this view. We'll go down there in a minute. That's one of the lakes. That'll be my water source. A couple things I want to point out that uh, have been really, really helpful. Um, the daisy chains, excellent because no fuss, no muss, boom, it goes up quick. Uh, the other is the Jacks Are Better under quilt that is, you know, it zipped on to my Dutch chameleon. Man, what a time saver. So when I get into camp, boom, my hammock is up and my under quilt is on and it's already tightened the way it needs to be. And I don't have to do anything else with that. So that is great. Um, but yeah, here's just a little look as we make our way down to the lake. Just want you to notice all of the uh, the trees. I mean, tons of great uh, camping. And there are a few camps camp spots along back here. Um, I think in the notes I saw there probably were around five. And there's even more around there. I am on the southern side of Selden Pass, about two miles from getting to the pass. And I'm probably, I can't remember how many miles from MTR. I hiked past that this afternoon. But this is a great, great location. Uh, check this lake out. This is beautiful. Stunning. Well, that's going to do it for campsite night seven here on the JMT. Really, you know, it has uh, great trees for hanging a hammock all over the place, good water source, and it sets you up really well to uh, climb over Selden early in the morning. Um, so, yeah, that's all I got for this one. This is where I camped at Crabtree Meadows, and it's around mile marker 198.5. However, another good hammock camping site option you may want to consider is around mile marker 199.6 on Whitney Creek. I recall there being a decent number of trees for hammock camping, and Whitney Creek is a great water source. There is no bear box, so you'll need to have all your food stored in a bear canister, and it's only about a mile farther north than Crabtree Meadows and would make your summit day of Mount Whitney a bit shorter. Also know that no camping is allowed along Timberline Lake. So if you reach that area, then you have gone too far as Whitney Creek is an outlet of this lake. As far as Guitar Lake, there are no hammock options in this area. Once you leave Timberline Lake, the terrain gets more and more rocky as you get above tree line. Between mile markers 196 and 197, there is a nice water source running out of Sandy Meadow. It was still flowing good when I was there in mid-August, but may run dry depending on the snowpack for that year. But this area has plenty of trees for hanging a hammock. There are a couple of tent sites, but you should be able to hang on any two good trees that you find preferably close to the water source. North of Wallace Creek, there are also a few good options. This would be in case you wanted to get closer to Forrester Pass for the next day. At mile marker 193.5, you cross Wright Creek and there are plenty of trees for hanging a hammock in this area. If you hike a couple more miles, you reach the Bighorn Plateau. This area is beautiful, just stunning with wide open 360 degree views of the mountains. And there is a grove of trees just past a pond between mile marker 191 and 192 where I thought would be an awesome place to hang a hammock. Finally, there are camping options near Tyndall Creek. 
There are a couple of established tent pad sites during the mile stretch down to Tyndall Creek, starting at around mile marker 191. And again, great trees near the creek, and you can hang pretty much anywhere. But there is a bear box at mile marker 189.8. And note that after Tyndall Creek and this bear box campsite, you start climbing above tree line, and there are no good hammock options until the other side of Forester Pass. After coming down Forester Pass, I would say there are not really any good hammock options until you start walking close to Bubbs Creek around mile marker 180. This is when you finally drop down into the forest and get your first good shade from the sun since Tyndall Creek. This area is spectacular and took me a bit by surprise. There is a bear box at mile marker 180.2 but I would say that there are excellent hammock options for a three mile stretch all the way to Bidette Meadow. This area is fairly flat and you'll have access to a good water source. This was one of my favorite stretches on the JMT because you're hiking next to the creek with views of cascading waterfalls, meandering streams, and wonderful mountain views. As far as options north of Vedette Meadow, I would say it is possible, but nothing as good as you will find on Bubbs Creek. As you leave Vedette Meadow, where their bear box is located, you begin to climb within the next half mile as you start your ascent of Glen Pass. I think there are some hammock options around mile marker 176 where you cross a good flowing stream. I also think there may be some decent spots around mile marker 175 after you hike a steep set of switchbacks and then it levels out just before you get to the views of Charlotte Lake. I'm just not sure of the water situation in this area. When I was hiking through it, it was dry. But you may want to consider these options if you are looking to get closer to Glen Pass for the next day. Ray Lakes is a great option for hammock camping, specifically Middle Ray Lakes where there is a bear box and trees. And believe me, this place lives up to the hype. I have never seen water so blue in a lake before. I would say if it works out with your mileage, stay here at Ray Lakes because it's special. I would also say that Dollar Lake is an option for hammock camping too. There are not a ton of trees, but I think you can make something work if needed, and it is a pretty lake as well. The next really good hammock option would be at the Woods Creek Suspension Bridge at mile marker 164.9. There's a bear box at this site, good access to Woods Creek, and plenty of trees to find a spot for hammock camping. As far as north of where I camped at mile marker 162.5, I was wrong about there not being any more trees as you are ascending Pincho Pass. I just didn't go far enough. There are pockets of trees one to two miles from where I camped, and there is a stream and small pond that could be a good water source. Had I known about this area, I would have continued hiking on that day, but my fear was that I would get above tree line with no hammock options. But there are definitely spots where you can make something work. Maybe not the best hammock sites, but it gives you options if you want to get closer to Pincho Pass for the next day. This is the day where I hiked over two passes, Pincho Pass and Matta Pass. And here are some different options you may want to consider based on your mileage for that day that will work for hammock camping in this area. First, I would say that the best hammock options between Pincho Pass and Matta Pass is around the South Forks Kings River at mile marker 153.3. There are excellent trees in this area. It is beautiful, a great water source, and it would set you up well for hiking over Mather Pass the next day. After Mather Pass, I love this section of the trail and the Palisades was one of my favorite parts on the JMT. There is a campsite that I saw at Upper Palisade Lake at mile marker 145.3, which I think might work. But there were people already camping at this site when I hiked by, so I couldn't see if I could make a hammock work or not. There's not a ton of trees at this spot, but I probably would have made something work if it had been free 
just because of these amazing views. As far as Lower Palisades Lake, I did not see any good options for hammock camping. That is why I made my way down to Palisade Creek. And here you will find good hammock options next to Palisade Creek for the next four miles until you start heading up Muir Pass and hiking next to the Middle Forks Kings River. The section of trail hiking up Muir Pass along the Middle Forks Kings River has plenty of options for hammock camping until you reach around mile marker 130 and start approaching tree line. I think two of the better options in this area are at the intersection for the Bishop Pass Trail at mile marker 134 and at Big Pete Meadow at mile marker 132.2. There are excellent trees and good water sources at these sites. Once you get over Muir Pass, you will hike by a beautiful section of trail with scenic views of Wanda Lake, Evolution Basin, and Sapphire Lake, none of which have hammock options. But then you will pass by Evolution Lake. At first, while I was hiking, it appeared to be two different lakes. But in looking at the map closer, Evolution Lake is a long lake running north to south. I would say that the northern section of Evolution Lake around mile marker 120 will have the best hammock options. However, at the southern end of the lake around mile marker 121, I did see a couple of spots where I think I could have made it work. It's a beautiful lake in a beautiful setting, and if it hadn't been so windy that day, I would have definitely hammock camped somewhere on Evolution Lake. After Evolution Lake, you drop down the next few miles until you reach Evolution Meadow around mile marker 114. You will pass by a couple of other meadows like Colby Meadow and McClure Meadow, which also have ideal con conditions for hammock camping, but I thought Evolution Meadow was a more scenic area. This reminded me a lot of Vedette Meadow and would make for an excellent spot for hammock camping. Beyond Evolution Meadow, there is a section of trail once you cross over Evolution Creek where you will find good hammock options beside the upper Evolution Creek Falls. This section only lasts a mile before you start to descend quickly down to the San Joaquin River, but I thought this would have been a beautiful place to camp with the many cascading waterfalls on Evolution Creek. After that, you really won't find any good hammock options until you cross over the Paiute Creek Bridge and start climbing Selden Pass. You might find something in the Aspen Meadow area at mile marker 110.6, but I don't recall any specific camping sites. The next really good hammock options start as you're making your climb up Selden Pass around mile marker 102.5 but if you have gone this far, then I recommend hiking another mile to Sally Key Lakes, which was one of my best hammock sites on the JMT. After Selden Pass, you hike down to Marie Lake, which was stunning. I hiked past this lake before the sun rose, but I do believe there were some trees, not a lot, where you might be able to hang a hammock. A beautiful spot if you can find a set of trees that will work. From there, it is a gentle grade down to Rosemary Meadow and Bear Creek. There are plenty of hammock options for your choosing during this five mile section between mile marker 97 and 92, just before you begin the initial climb of Silver Pass. I was just glad I never had to go to the ground. Um, I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult to finding uh, campsites for hanging a hammock than than it really was because it wasn't difficult at all there was never a time on the trip where i thought oh i'm not going to have a place to hang my hammock 